In the city of Kilkenny in 1324, there was a family accused of witchcraft, and they had a curious revenge. Dame Alice Keitler was rich, and where there's money, there's jealousy. So the cruel gossips of Kilkenny set to work to destroy her. Four husbands Dame Alice has had, Mistress Black said, and each one dead. Strangely dead, they say. Everyone knows it was murder, Master Ballyragget told her. She should hang for the murders, the woman hissed. But she's too clever to be caught, the man whispered and looked over his shoulder as if the devil himself stood in the shadows. They say she uses the black arts. Mistress Black hardly dared to speak the word. She just moved her fat lips in the shape. Witchcraft. Murder was something the gossips couldn't prove. So Rich Alice lived on with her son, William Outlaw, and her servant, Petronella. But the rumours flew around the city and reached the ears of the bishop himself. He called the gossips before him. Dealing with the devil is a serious charge, a burning matter, he said. So tell me what you have seen. The gossips shuffled and looked at one another. Finally, Mistress Black spoke up. Last Easter, I saw Dame Alice sweeping the dust on the road outside her son's house. The bishop wrinkled his long nose in disgust. Sweeping the road is not against the law of the church. If it was, Kilkenny would have the dirtiest roads in Ireland. Mistress Black twisted her fat fingers and her gooseberry green eyes bulged. Aye, Your Grace, but she was muttering a spell as she did it. The bishop leaned forward. Did you hear the words? He did, but he durstn't speak them. Speak them to me. The Lord will understand, he said. The woman licked her lips and went on. Dame Alice was saying, May all the wealth of Kilkenny be swept to the door of my son William. Ah, so William Outlaw is in league with the devil too, the bishop nodded. Aye, and their servant girl, Petronella, Master Ballyragged insisted. I've seen her gathering herbs by the river Nor to put in Dame Alice's cauldron. Aye, it's true, the other gossips agreed. And so Dame Alice, William Outlaw and poor Petronella were brought before the bishop and faced with their accusers. Dame Alice shook her head in disbelief. William shrugged while poor Petronella just wept. I find you guilty, the bishop roared. I sentence you to be taken to City Hall, where you will be tied to a stake and a fire lit under you until your godless bodies are burned to ashes. Dame Alice looked thoughtful. William frowned and poor Petronella passed out in a dead faint. But when the next day dawned and the crowds gathered at the City Hall, there was sensational news. Dame Alice has escaped, Mistress Black cried. Used her money to bribe her guards, I'll bet. Master Ballyragget groaned, and they say William Outlaw has offered his money to pay for the finest lead roof on our cathedral, if only the bishop will spare him. The woman wailed, We've been robbed of our burning. There's still the serving girl, Petronella, the man said, and pointed down the high street. The girl was being dragged from the castle, while a silent crowd watched with a mixture of hatred and horror. She was tied with thick rope to the wooden pole that was erected on the cobbles. She was almost lifeless already. Only a soft moaning showed there was still life in her. The black hooded executioner stepped behind her and out of mercy wrapped a cord around her neck and strangled her before he lit the fire. Her moaning stopped. Someone sobbed in the crowd, but no one left till there was nothing but a pile of stinking ashes on the street and the wind whipped them into the air and towards the cathedral. The stain stayed on the street for many years. But the story didn't end there. William Outlaw opened his chests of gold and paid for the mighty roof to be placed over the cathedral at Kilkenny. It's warm. Mistress Black smiled as she stepped into the cathedral and looked up at the new roof. And watertight, Master Ballyragged added. And so heavy, it's even making those massive rafters sag, the woman said in awe. And crack, the man said softly, listening to the groaning of the timbers as they moaned like a girl condemned to die. The two gossips couldn't tear their eyes from the dark beam as it began to split and show the pale wood in its heart. When the beam had cracked clean through, there was more weight for the others to bear. And one by one, they snapped, with a crack like some hellish whip. 
the heavy sheets of lead, the price of William Outlaw's life, began to tumble into the church below. The gossips ran towards the altar that stood under the massive church tower, but when the roof fell, it pulled down the tower too. It was over a week before they cleared the rubble and pulled out the twisted corpses. Of course, it could have been just bad luck. Of course, it couldn't have been a witch's revenge, could it? The Irish tried to throw out their terrible Tudor monarch, but their rebellions failed. Henry VIII faced a rebellion from Silken Thomas, so he had him hanged. Elizabeth I's governor said, I have often wished Ireland could be sunk in the sea. Charming. Her armies in Ireland were even more cruel. An Englishman called Sir Humphrey Gilbert described one horribly historical scene. The order from Elizabeth's governor was that the heads of all those which were killed in the day should be cut off. The heads were to be brought to the place where he camped at night and should there be laid on the ground by each side of the path leading into his tent, so that no one could come into his tent without passing through this lane of heads. This brought great terror to the people when they saw the heads of their dead fathers, brothers, children, relatives and friends lying on the ground before their faces. Then the English tried a new trick, starving their Irish enemies. They burned the Irish crops and stopped the next years being planted. By 1602, bodies lay in the ditches, mouths stained green from trying to eat nettles. <laughs>